with salt in my eyes, water up my nose, seaweed in my hair, and sand between my toes. But I'm not complaining, oh no, not me, cause I'm down on the beach at the edge of the sea. I got sunscreen on my shoulders, motion on my lips, my ice cream's back to ten and the seagulls grab my chips. But I'm not complaining, oh no, not me, cause I'm down on the beach, up the edge of the sea. Riding on my surfboard, having lots of fun Searching in the rock pools, building castles in the sun I'm not complaining, oh no, not me Remembering the stories of Jesus by the sea Oh, I'm having a good time, enjoying all the good things that God has given me Jesus down by the sea, you me and Jesus down by the sea, down by the sea, yeah. We are glad to go up to the house. Of the Lord to offer worship, to offer praise. We are glad to go up to the house of the Lord on this beautiful holy day. We have such a sure foundation, certain faith in God above. Songs of celebration, rejoicing in His love. We are glad to go to the house of the Lord on this beautiful holy day. We are glad to go to the house of the Lord to offer.
And so good morning and welcome to our worship here at All Saints in Sidmouth today. Uh, my name's David Capon and I'm the vicar and I'm going to be kicking us off today on a series where we're going to be looking at 1 John. Uh, part of a collection of little epistles tucked at the back of the end of the New Testament that maybe often we glance by but have something of great urgency, encouragement and joy to speak to us today. So whether you're a regular with us or whether you're joining us for the first time, it's great to have you with us now as we worship together, being reminded that we are a city on the hill. So we've just sung of how we're a city on a hill and it's lovely this morning as part of our sort of a regular interviews to be joined by uh, Chris and Andrea. Chris and Andrea, not everyone in church will of course know you. So would you like to tell us just a bit about yourselves and uh, what you've been up to over the last few weeks? Uh, yeah, hi David. Um... Well, we've been going to All Saints for about 14 years now. Um, we've got two young boys, Nathaniel, who's 10, and Caleb, who turned six a couple of weeks ago. So we had a lockdown birthday. Uh, and we've, over the last couple of weeks, well, we had half term the week before uh, and just enjoyed the sunshine and got out and about. And as the, as the boys say, had a few adventures. And then this week, we've been back to a little bit of homeschooling yeah <laughs> so so i i teach piano normally in the evenings but obviously right. because circumstances i know i'm not doing that at the moment and i do miss my pupils i have to say but life is busy with two boys and um but it's enjoyable this really yeah. is yeah and um we yeah we've enjoyed um homeschooling them and they've responded well but i appreciate we've got 
or we're both teachers, which makes it mm. a bit easier. And they're at a good age where they want to learn generally. Oh, no. so, Great. And I know there's loads of people who will obviously be able to relate to that, I guess, in terms of being aware of people in their family who have been um, homeschooled or people doing the homeschooling, as well as also being people like teachers and trying to juggle homeschooling at home and looking after classes and things. I guess as we look back over sort of the last couple of months or so, um, it's been quite a journey for um, lots of people in various ways. I was wondering if you'd be happy to share with us just a little bit of how you've been aware of God being at work and maybe also what you've been aware of God saying um, and leading us in throughout that. I think at the start, uh, I think what was really important was obviously church online for us um, and sort of tuning in as a family. Um, But I think Zoom and modern technology has been a real blessing because we've met as a home group every week bar one we, we didn't meet in half term week but that has been a real encouragement throughout meeting together and we start off by having a chat and having a coffee together and a catch up and then the zoom 40 minutes is over and then we rejoin again and uh, and then obviously we're we're studying at the moment we're, we're looking at the shack so that's been kind of an interesting journey so far um mm. We've been obviously praying lots, like everybody is, um, and it's it's quite interesting because last Saturday, the day before we were thinking about Pentecost, I was praying a lot about the COVID-19 situation, and I, I really felt God um, showing me a picture, and that picture was of a ball of wool, and it was very, very tangled and knotty, and I was trying to pray into what, what was that sort of representing? And I felt God was saying it's representing the world at the moment, that it's a really knotty, messy, tangled place. And I prayed more into it and saying, you know, God, how are we going to get out of this? And one word really came into mind. And I felt God was just saying, patience, be patient. So. I think there's a lot of people out there that are, are being very patient and I think it's just being patient for that bit longer and continuing to be fervent in prayer and just being patient in this situation. We're not used to being patient, are we, as a society? We're so mm-hmm. used to everything being instant in every way. It's probably more so now than ever. So that patience so hopefully that'll encourage some people there to just keep on going keep running that race and being patient i think i think i've been acutely aware of the different the different situations and needs of so many people and you know i kind of feel that we're in quite a privileged position where we live um also you know we like andrea said earlier on we we've been enjoying homeschooling and i know i know some people have found that challenging and everyone's facing just a, a huge variety of challenges and I think in my prayer time I've just been very aware of that and that, that everyone's got so many different needs now more so than ever um, and also we've um, sort of taken on a little bit more work um, if you like with Sidmouth prayer room so um, we've been sort of on and off connected with that over the years and found it a real a real blessing um, it's such a peaceful place and it's just been in a sort of fallow period before the lockdown as well and we've taken on the garden and uh, spent uh, a few hours on Monday kind of pruning the garden well I think hacking away at it really uh, it was a bit of a jungle and I think we both felt that was something that God wants us to do and to make it a peaceful place and a place where people can can pray ultimately uh, and have that that time with him. So we're going to go back down again tomorrow to finish the job. Fantastic. I think the prayer room is one of those, um, uh, which is down on Holmdale, for those who don't know, it's one of those little gems in Sidmouth, which uh, sometimes many aren't aware of. So, yeah, so thank you for that. And I guess at the moment it's a bit difficult for it to be fully utilised, but hopefully in due course uh, we'll be able you know, to use it uh, as we were in the past. Um, I mean, you shared quite a lot, obviously, there, and I'm sure that that image of tangles and the needs of being patient is something that many of us will will be able to relate to, especially as things continue to go on. Uh, But for you as a family, 
how could we as a church be praying for you over the next week? Um, well, I'm going back uh, to work next week. So our school decided to, well, my head decided to um, change, you know, the children that are coming in as of next week. So we delayed for a week. So next week I'll be going in Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, and then working from home Wednesday, which will be a big change from what it has been for the last 10 weeks or so. Um, so having, the children having had sort of, well, not entirely one-to-one -one, because I have been working and I've been going in every Thursday, but they've had, you know, generally a, a good share of both of us to, to then going into next week, it will be a bit of a change for them. So just praying for them that they'll adapt, I'll adapt and that everyone involved will be safe ultimately when, I'm go, when I go back to school, uh, that those children will be safe and staff will be safe. Yeah. yeah, and maybe just praying for, you know, me and a lot of people out there that are still homeschooling and uh, that obviously I love both of them all the, well, nearly all the time apart from Wednesday because Wednesday's my shopping day and that's another thing actually that has been really a blessing to us is getting to know people in the community more. So I've been shopping quite a lot for different vulnerable people down the street and uh, in other places in Sidmouth as well. And we've really got to know our neighbours very well. And we knew them before, but I think that the children have built up a relationship with them. And I think for us as well, um, well, Kayla particularly um, enjoyed the dancing every Friday over the 10 weeks when, when there was um, the NHS clap. I think... Um, yeah, there's, yeah, street disco every Friday. Yeah, so that, that, was, that was good. And then obviously celebrations for the, the day as well. Um, it's just been nice to get to know the neighbours. Yeah. yeah, so praying that we would be a good witness with, in where we are. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that as we've chimed in so much, obviously with the situation many of us are in, but also building on, on those front lines that we've been thinking about. So I'm sure many of us will really love praying for you in terms of for going back to school, Chris, this week, uh, Andrew at home with the boys, but also for your situation. Uh, in terms of with your neighbours and uh, as all of us continue to adjust and get used to what we're living with now. So uh, we'll be praying for you and uh, thank you so much for sharing with us this morning. Thank you. That's great. So we're going to go now and uh, listen to God's word from the Bible. The first letter of John, chapter one. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testify to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. Walking in the light. This is the message we have heard from him and to declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The earth was dark until you spoke, then all was light and all was free. Still, O oh God, so many ways. 
Christ you gave your gift of life to save us from the death of night who come and set our spirits free and draw us to your perfect light Nice to And so, as we pause, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word that speaks to us afresh in each generation. Help us to hear your voice. Be attentive to your spirit and ready to do your will. Amen. With all that's been going on in the last few weeks, I suspect many of us have thought that if we had a message that we could pass on to loved ones in our families or those that come afterwards, what it is that we might want to say. We might want to give a message of reminding them of our love for them, maybe to encourage them or maybe to share a memory that is particularly marked on our minds as we remember them. Today we're starting a series when over the next few weeks we're going to be looking at 1 John and then 2 and 3 John on successive Sundays. They're very personal books that come slotted in right towards the end of the New Testament. They are written to the church that would be in modern day Asia Minor. And as you read them, you realise that they're written very much to individuals in the midst of particular circumstances. The character of them is just like one John's Gospel, which leads us to that conclusion that they are written by the disciple. 1 John doesn't specifically give his name, but the characteristic is exactly the same as 2 and 3 John. In 2 John, we find him referred to as the elder. And I'm sure that as it was read to us just now, the beginning of this epistle has all those echoes that draw us back and make us think about the beginning of John's gospel itself. As we open this up, it's clearly someone who is towards the end of his life, who served the Lord faithfully and is passing on a message that he wants others to hear. It's important. 
he wants them to heed it. The circumstance, sadly, is clearly of particular division and falling out in the church, something that so sadly happens. But in the way that John addresses them, he tells them powerful things for them and for us. As we'll see in successive weeks, he almost spirals around some key themes. But as maybe a letter from a beloved older person, there's no way in which this is merely shy and retiring. Rather, it's a call to truth and things that are important. And in it, he pulls no punches. Look at the tone from verses 6, 8 and 10 if you've got a Bible to hand. Verse 6. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, and we lie and do not live out the truth. Or verse 8. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Or verse 10. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. This is no mere sort of gentle introduction, rather it's serious stuff here that is at stake. As John interacts with those receiving the letter, how is it that he has authority? How is it that they can know what he says is reliable? Well, as we read the beginning, with those echoes of the beginnings of John's gospel, he's clear that it is we that have seen things and have proclaimed it to them who are receiving the letter. It is a claim of first-hand evidence. Listen as I read it. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testify to it. And we proclaim it to you. The eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. John is claiming nothing short of eyewitness testimony verifiable testimony of what he has observed and that people he has met in his lifetime will be able to bear witness to. We live in a world today where it's not uncommon in some quarters to find people who will want to question the existence of Jesus Christ as a real person, who might want to bracket him just as nice and interesting moral philosophy to live your life by. Good values, but not based on something that's concrete. But to any historical analysis, the New Testament stands up remarkably well. If you've got a bit of time this summer and you want to delve into it in some depth, there are first-rate academic books by Richard Balcom, Jesus and the Eyewitnesses, or Crane Blomberg's The Historical Reliability of the Gospel. If you'd like to know a bit more about that or need to put you in contact with some of those resources, maybe drop me a line. These have been written in recent years, which look at the issue of reliability. Claims that chime in very much with what John here writes. So as he writes, claim making a claim of historic reliability, of first-hand testimony, what is the heart of his message that he wants them to hear, these churches to hear in the midst of the challenges that they're encountering? Well, look at it. It comes from verse 5, doesn't it? This is the message we have heard from him, that is God and Jesus, and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. That theme of light and darkness is such a powerful theme we will find running throughout the whole of this letter. John spirals around it, coming back and seeking to remind his people time and time again about it. And we know that light is powerful, isn't it? It penetrates darkness. 
We see that when the electricity fails or we need to go for a torch. Or if you're a bit like us in the Cape Horn family, just the other week as uh, on a clear night, the International Space Station went over an increasingly dark sky. The reflection of light from it, from the sun shining on it, was bright. Light breaks into darkness. And we live in a world, don't we, where there is darkness and in need of light. Sadly, we only need to look at the news of what's happened in the States over the last few days. When we maybe think close to home about issues there are in our families. Where there's brokenness, fear, hatred. When we're trapped by guilt and fear. Where there's deceit in families, broken relationships, abuse, crime. These are issues that need to be addressed in our day and in our world. These are issues that have been in the world throughout generations. And as we hear and we encounter that, we know that God is light. John, as he's writing to them, is wanting to remind them that there is an urgency of knowing Jesus. As a family, sometimes in the past, we've gone and done a bit of geocaching. It's a bit of a sort of treasure hunt. But the joy in geocaching isn't really in the hunting, although a bit of a hunt is fun. It's in the finding. John is telling those that he's writing that they need to find Jesus. The world that we live in so often wants the kingdom that Jesus brings, but without the king. And John writes to them and is telling them that they need to know the king, that they need to know Jesus. Because outside of Jesus, there are no answers. Our greatest need is to be forgiven, to become friends of God. And John tells us that this has been done by what he has witnessed. Just after what was read to us as he climaxes. My dear children, so we'll pick up next week. I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. John reminds them with those hard words that they are without sin. Anyone who claims to be without sin deceives themselves. In the last few weeks, I've been reminded that it still seems that sorry is the hardest word. We're called to say sorry to God, but we're also called to have that assurance that we don't just get left in the breach, but rather is there is one, the Lord Jesus Christ, who brings light into the darkness and forgives us and gives us hope. I wonder what that might mean for you today. I'm going to give us a moment now just to pause. As we pause hearing that challenge that John gives us. But also as we hear the hope. That God is light. And that he has stepped into our world to save us. How is it today that you need to know the reality of that light? to know that hope. Jesus says, come to me. I am the light. So can I invite you now, as we continue maybe having heard that good news, to join with me in saying these words of confession. O King, enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name. Lord God Almighty, in our sinfulness we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. 
heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken, and great are you, Lord, it's your come together in prayer. At this time, when the world is in darkness, we speak to our God, who is always ready to listen to us. God, who through his Son, our Saviour Jesus, overcomes darkness with his light, and by his Holy Spirit, brings light into our lives. 
three in one, Father, Son and Spirit. Father, there is much confusion in our world because of the coronavirus that has changed our normal way of living into something that seems alien to us. The future could look dark, but you bring the light of hope. Protect, we pray, all who are working to bring health back to those suffering in both mind and body. Give wisdom to those who are searching for new treatments and a vaccine. Give understanding to world leaders and politicians so that they can guide and support all who look to them. Help us all to be mindful of the needs of others and to be willing to go the extra mile for each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This week we have witnessed the race riots in America and the protests in Hong Kong against the restricting legislation brought in by China. Into this darkness bring your light. Show the leaders that they need to work to bring reconciliation and not inflame the situation. Show the law enforcers that violence only breeds violence and they need to bring a calm response to the streets. Show those who riot and protest that destroying and burning will never bring their rights to the fore. And show the world that racism and dictatorship are never right, but tolerance and freedom are your way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we come home. Father, we thank you for each other. When we cannot meet together, we thank you for those who are putting together this online worship, which is bringing your light into our lives. For those who are keeping in touch with others in our church and community by phone, email and letters. For those who are looking to care for the needy. We especially bring to you just now anyone known to us who are bereaved, sick or lonely. As your church without walls, out in the world, help us to bring the light of your spirit into our lives. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. Now we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So in terms of uh, church family news, um, many of our notices have been sent out by email on Friday, so I'd encourage you uh, to look at those. Uh, as I said earlier today, we're beginning a series today looking at 1, 2 and 3 John that we'll pick up on, on successive weeks. Uh, also going out at the beginning of this month is um, our magazine and in that you'll find a link to uh, the Bible Project which has got a fantastic overview video of 1, 2 and 3 John that you might like to watch as well as some really amazing resources that we can connect with and use uh, during the week. I really commend them to you. Over the last few weeks we've also been thinking about front lines. Uh, where we are, those places that God calls us to be. As indeed uh, Chris and Andrea have shared with us a little bit this morning about theirs. I don't know where you'll be meeting people from All Saints in the next week or so. Maybe as you walk uh, along the seafront or maybe uh, in a call uh, as part of a home group. But maybe when we meet together, wouldn't it be a lovely thing to be able to do? Uh, to be able to share a little bit about what life is like on our front lines, what we're seeing God do, what we're praying for, and how we're seeing prayers answered. We're going to conclude our service now, though, with a hymn that reminds us of what we're about, why we're here, and why we have hope in the midst of darkness. We're going to sing, In Christ Alone, My Hope is Found. i 
rest alone, my hope is gone. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, my swelling suits, my comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. So as we go, a final prayer. Father, we thank you that you are light. We thank you that you dispel the darkness, the darkness of our world and the darkness of our lives. As we go out into the world, fill us with your spirit to help us to face all that there is before us and that we may be shaped by the good news that you have died and risen for us. Amen.